he sticks his head under there and uh, he has the eye of a uh, rather large recreation of the male anatomy. I worked at a authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer that was fairly large in size. I was there for, I think it was almost three years, not the longest time, but it, uh, it was long enough in the dealership world. Uh, as they say in the car business, once you're in, it's very hard to get out, and uh, I still haven't. I just work for myself. So working at the dealer, uh, you see a high volume of cars. Uh, so as expected, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, situations that come your way. On an average day, I'd ride up 15, 18 cars, sometimes into 20, 22, which was a pretty high volume for a uh, luxury brand. One of the memorable ones, this was actually not my personal ticket, but one of the other service advisors. It was very common in your coupes, convertibles, anything that you had to fold the seat forward to put anything in the back or anything like that. They'd come in and have complaints of, hey, my seat won't move, my seat's not doing what it's supposed to, it only moves so far, this, that, and the other. Generally, it was a water bottle, purse, pin, something got stuck because it rolled under the seat, or when they pushed it forward, it grabbed something and got stuck. So usually it was a pretty easy fix. Hey, here's your something you were missing three months ago, this is what broke your seat. One day, we had this one come in, it was a newer SL, so two-door Roadster, there's no space behind the seats. There's hardly any storage in these cars and came in with the typical complaint. Say, hey, my seat's not moving like it's supposed to. It moves an inch, whatever it was, forward, backward. Of course, the, tech, the service advisor asked, hey, is there anything, you know, do you put water bottles? Do you do this? You know, because usually we'd fix these on the service drive because it's like, it's not worth riding up, putting them in a loaner car, waiting for the technicians to have time to look at it. He asked all the questions. I'm like, nope, nope, I've looked at everything. Seat just doesn't work. Okay. Writes it up. Waits like, you know, I think at the time we were a day or two behind in the shop. So it sits for a day or two and uh, tech brings it in. He tests function. That's our first thing. Moves seat, seat back. That works. Headrest works. Seat moves forward a little bit. Doesn't go back. He's like, okay, cool. So first thing we do is stick our head under there and say, what's, is the track free? Is it dirty? You know, a lot of people like to spill sodas as well and they get sticky, all the sugars, and that'll stop them up as well. Not in this case. He sticks his head under there and uh, he has the eye of a uh, rather large recreation of the male anatomy in bright purple. So, of course, this is very exciting to a technician amongst your services and your warranty work throughout the day. So he comes running to the advisor's offices and says, you guys aren't going to believe this. This is what I found. So of course, like the whole shop kind of stops because everyone's got to see this. Anything that happens like that, guarantee you the shop's going to stop and everyone's going to go running. In a shop as large as ours, you know, for a, one of the Benz dealers, we were one of the not quite the largest in the Atlanta area, but it's still large by the country standards. We had about 40 technicians, I think usually between six and eight advisors. Shop rate at the time, I think was 150, somewhere around there. They keep changing it, but shop rate was around 150 bucks an hour. So when you stop 40 technicians, three shop foremen, two managers, eight service advisors, you know, three or so people in the BDC, three people in the booker's office. You know, there's a lot that goes into this. And then if it reaches sales or parts, you're pulling people from there too. So if you look at this on a value perspective, you know, you're probably losing six, ten thousand dollars $10,000 or more in productivity from everything just coming to a halt to see something like this uh, unfold. The advisor was then stuck in a strange predicament of how he explains to this client that their car that's under warranty, even though there's not really a charge to, to deal with this, you know, it kind of just gets brushed under the rug. But he, uh, I believe he ended up taking a picture of it and saying, Miss whoever, 
this is what we found wrong with your seat. Does this belong to you? And of course, this is a very embarrassing moment for someone. And uh, I believe she ended up blaming it on her daughter, if I remember correctly, <laughs> which is uh, unfortunate. But uh, that's how the story goes. We removed the uh, anatomy device and uh, seat magically started working properly. And everyone went about their day. And fortunately for maybe the client is that uh, none of us have ever forgotten. On the subject of seats, as these were, as I said, a very common uh, occurrence at the dealership. I had this one particular client who I'm still in touch with, actually. Super nice guy, but uh, he is a very large gentleman. I don't know exactly what his weight is, but I would imagine he's around 400 pounds. So, large guy, and fittingly, he drove an S-Class. As self-admitted by him, is that it was the only thing that was comfortable enough, that has enough space to support him. He'd bring this car in. He drove it. Uh, he's an artist. He drives Miami, New York, California. So he puts all kind of miles on this car. So I'd usually see him every six weeks or so. Not long after he got the car, he came in. He says, hey, Cam, my uh, my seat's not working. I'm like, oh, okay, what's going on, buddy? He said, the backrest is too far back. I can't get it to come forward. And I'm like, okay, cool. We'll get it looked at, get it back in the shop, pull codes and see you know, of course we function test it, don't see anything. It's not operating as it's supposed to. It just, it'll move maybe an inch forward back on the backrest, but nothing more. So once you read the codes, we see, okay, we've lost synchronization with the backrest. So uh, as common on Mercedes, you normalize all your seat motors, window motors. That's what makes all your automatic functions and memory functions and everything work properly. Without that, it just gets upset. It won't move. It won't cooperate or do anything. We normalize the seat and it's a Pretty interesting process is it moves the seat all the way forward, all the way up, all the way down. It actuates the backrest. It does the headrest. It'll move the seat belt height as well. Uh, so it's probably a 90 second process as this goes through and learns all of its end stops. It'll do the steering column as well. So we did that. It works perfect. Everything's happy. We're like, okay, simple problem. He takes it. He's happy. Goes on his way. Well, you know, as he drives so much, I see him in another six weeks. He comes in, Cam, my seat's not working again. And uh, I'm like, okay, you know, it's probably lost synchronization again. We'll, we'll take a look at it. And first time around, we kind of had an inkling of what the cause may be. Second time, we were positive of what was happening. What was happening is when he would get in the chair as he moved himself in, the pressure pushing on the backrest would actually make the motor skip a tooth. And that would make it say, hey, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, and it stops working. I go to the service manager, and I'm like, hey, this is what's happening. I don't want to bring this up. Can we just take care of this? He agrees. Says, yep, just run it through the shop. We'll put it on the shop bill. Tech will get paid. Everyone's happy. Give the car back to him. A few more weeks go by. Here he comes again. Cam, this is getting really frustrating. My seat doesn't work. I, of course, just brush it on the rug. I'm like, oh, you know, this happens a lot. You know, it's just something that happens as they get older. We'll just, you know, rather than try and dig in and fix it, we'll just resynchronize it. We do it again at no charge. And a few more weeks go by. He comes back. He's like, Cam. And I'm like, oh, boy. And he says, no, Cam, I think I figured this out. And I'm like, oh, oh, really? He's like, I think I figured out why my seat's not working. I'm like, oh, okay, do tell. I, I'd like to hear this. He said, I think it's my weight. And I'm like, ah, is that what it is? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we, we kind of had an inkling that's what it is. He says, yeah, when I get in, that's when it stops working. He says, yeah, I get in, then I try and move it, and it won't move. So I kind of had to break it to him at that point. And I'm like, yeah, we just kind of brush this one under the rug. We get it. And he, he, he's just not ashamed of it. He knows he's a big guy. This is what it is. He's super happy regardless. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. It's uh, just funny. That is the only S-Class I had to get in gently as the uh, cushioning in the seat wasn't exactly cushioning any longer. It was a bit compressed. So when you got in the car, if you got in with any kind of haste, you would just be straight bottom to frame. 
once we've made this uh, discovery, he decided that not losing weight, of course, because we, we don't want to do that. Uh, he was fine where he's at. He's a happy guy. I have no qualms with him about that. If you're happy, you're happy. He learned he needed to make some changes in how he uh, entered and exited his vehicle. But thankfully, he still has this car uh, seven-ish years later, and uh, we no longer have issues with backrest synchronization. The simple lease from Premier Financial Services is the most powerful tool in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits of a lease, like the tax preference as well as the low payments, plus the benefits of a traditional loan. You can build up equity, pay it off at any time, and along the way you'll know exactly where you stand with their easy to understand amortization table. Premier's amazing nationwide team is standing by and ready to help you own your dream car in a way that's easier and more affordable than you could ever imagine. Whether it's a vintage Porsche, a modern McLaren, or a multi-million dollar car collection, Premier is here to help. They've been supporting Vinwiki for the last six years, and we certainly love them for that. But even more so, we love them because they make it easier and more affordable than you could imagine to own your dream car.